I hope this trail really mellows out. What's up y'all? Welcome back to the channel. 1300 GS per usual. We find ourselves yet again on Thomas Mountain Road. There it is right there. Uh, 14 day stay limit. I'm not staying obviously. I'm just going to go right up this thing. But yeah, it's a beautiful day out here. It's about 65, 66 degrees down in the desert where I live. It's about 100. It's probably like 95 though. It's a windy day today down there up here. Light breeze, but not too bad overall. Um, I took off the tail bag uh, just because I really don't need it for a whole lot other than just carrying like some GoPro equipment and stuff. But I could fit that in my backpack just as easily. And um, yeah, I just, uh, I just don't need it. And if I if I leave the stuff on there, being that it, I don't have a lock on the zippers yet, if I go away from the bike too far, if I you know when I park to have lunch or whatever, I'm always kind of worried about somebody taking all my stuff. So yeah, I'd rather just keep my backpack on me till I get that top tail bag. Honestly, I got specifically for uh, long rides and um, in the future doing like um, overnights and stuff like that. So. During the day, if I'm just zipping around or whatever, I'm keeping it off. But yeah, it's a gorgeous bike. I love the looks of this bike, man. I really do just love the way the subframe looks on here and all that. A lot of people hate it. A lot of people love it. <sighs> is what it is. But yeah, let's get on with it. I'm not going to do too much cinematic stuff today. Don't really feel like it. I don't feel like setting up tripods and all that stuff. GoPros on the floor. Or it's just going to be a raw... Uh, ride video today We're gonna try to step it up a little bit. I'm gonna try to uh, Go a little bit faster than usual without getting too squirrely. I hope so We'll see Hope y'all are having a nice day out there. It's uh, like I said, it's a really nice day up here. Once again, though, man, I just thought about that. I forgot my goggles, man. I'm so bummed. Got these really nice pair of goggles I ordered on uh, from 100% or whatever that company's called, and uh, they're just sitting on the shelf at home because I keep forgetting to bring them out here. And last time I was out here, the bugs were were really bad kind of kind of annoying man they kept going in my eyes and um could have rode with the visor down but i like having the visibility to be honest you know what let's switch in a second right here kind of yeah there we go all right but yeah um all kinds of little like flies or gnats i don't know what they're called but they're annoying man they tend to fly right into your your uh, visor opening Whew. had a little bit too much coffee this morning feeling an extra anxious today for some odd reason as you guys if you guys uh paid attention to my last video i have kind of an anxiety problem but working on it you know So, uh, yeah, last time I came up, I did the loop that starts off se Highway 74 South and pops out just before, um, or not before, but right at like Lake Hemet on uh, the north side of Highway 74 on that stretch. And uh, unfortunately, I try to mess with the angle of the chit of the GoPro on my chin mount and I completely foobarred it. So basically I had like 30 minutes of uh of footage that was just me staring at the floor. Or at least that's what it looked like from the perspective of the GoPro. 
um, unfortunately yeah so you all didn't get to see the whole trail in its entirety so uh, uh, today though I'm actually gonna take a, a different route that makes this a little bit longer um, I'm not sure by how many miles but it's significantly longer than uh, than the usual trail I take it's about I, you know what like I said I don't know the mileage but it's definitely significantly longer than the usual trail uh, and it pops out it still pops out on uh, 74 it just pops out on uh, farther north after the the split you take to get up to uh, Idlewild so if you're on highway 74 heading north um, instead of taking that fork in the road that takes you to Idlewild you just keep going straight like you're going uh, towards um, I believe it's Hemet or not Hemet but whatever yeah I guess it is Hemet uh, anyhow yeah so it spits you out on that side of 74 over there so we'll see what it looks like um, see how far I can get through it I'm hoping I can do the whole thing if it's like this it shouldn't be a problem but uh, I read some stuff and I guess it can be a little bit more difficult but we'll give it a go as I said before if it's that bad we'll find a, a, a spot and just turn her around man but um, yeah I'm really glad I, I uh, found out about this trail through my buddy Bob um, it's really a, a fantastic little ride man not too far from my house pretty beginner friendly for for my experience level so yeah this is an awesome little trail <sighs> beautiful out here today I mean I couldn't ask for a better better day to go riding I won't be doing a whole lot of talking in this video guys because uh, I'm trying to concentrate on the road and uh, like I said get a little bit quicker on these things um, I was watching uh, some videos on guys that ride the, the uh, off-road on these big bikes man it's pretty impressive what uh, guys are how, how fast guys are able to ride I hope to get get that level of expertise at some point um, but that'll come hopefully with uh, with classes uh, in September maybe if I can find them um, the problem is out here the uh, the temperature gets so hot that a lot of the off-road classes um, they don't have any any available during the summertime so I gotta wait till September for some of them. I'll have to, I don't remember the names of them, but uh, there's quite a bit out here in Southern California. So I plan on taking some of that to get, to get better, my fundamentals basically for uh, doing off-road riding. I definitely wanna take some classes that'll teach me how to ride in um, soft sand. And uh, yeah, just soft sand and gravel type of scenarios. Cause um, I want to I want to do some BDRs 
and I heard some of these BDRs, especially around here in Southern California, are incredibly tough. But I really don't have a whole lot of interest in um, doing the BDR down here in SoCal because it goes mostly through the desert. And, you know, I live in a desert. So I've seen that stuff my whole life. Like, like I said earlier, or in a previous video earlier, I mean, a previous video, I, uh, I grew up riding dirt bikes out here. Um, before there was nothing out here in the Coachella Valley, it was mostly all desert. And uh, I grew up riding dirt bikes. So I've ridden in the desert quite a bit and I'm just tired of that scenery. Uh, that's why I like coming out here to this uh to the mountains because i enjoy um the cool weather and uh the scenery you know i like i like looking at trees and uh and uh all this greenery over a bunch of sand and rocks which the california bdr is mostly comprised of i i I mean, I would consider doing it at some point, but the one the BDRs I'm mostly interested in doing are the ones in the north. So like Oregon, Washington, um, you know, those kind of trails up there where it's nice and green and cool, most importantly. So maybe next summer after I do classes, I'll cruise on up there and try to take on one of those BDRs. Plus, I heard those BDRs are more uh, more beginner friendly. They're not as technical. Like, there's not as much gravel and like sand and difficult terrain to navigate on a big uh, big adventure bike. So. That's mainly why I want to do that, that one in particular, or the, those BDRs in particular. The other thing that's preventing me from doing BDRs straight out the gate is the fact that I don't own any camping equipment at the moment. Um, that's kind of uh, one of my my uh, most expensive um, yeah, one of the things that that um that's kind of stopping me from uh, doing like trails and trail riding like BDRs and stuff besides my besides my skill level uh, skill level aside I don't own any camping equipment so I've been looking at some REI stuff and different different uh, systems off like loan from Lone Rider and stuff and I've actually never never solo camped it and come to think of it i don't think i i can't remember the last time i went camping with a group of friends or family so um my buddy blue from uh, fort collins the guy i'm going to moab with he's camped several times and he's he's definitely a, a bigger outdoorsman than i am so i'm kind of leaning on him for a lot of these uh a lot of the outdoor stuff uh, a lot of the camping stuff I plan on doing um, you know we were we were gonna camp Moab instead of staying at hotels and whatnot but like I said it's just uh, another expense that I can't afford at the moment because um, yeah I still have to get a proper uh, a proper woo huh I got to get a proper, that's a soft sand back there. I got to get a proper luggage system still. I'm waiting for Lone Rider. I think, I think I might go Lone Rider. Um, but 
poor SW Motec. I think SW Motec is more um, more economical than uh, the Lone Rider. The problem is, so BMW. Uh, I didn't find this out until after I purchased my bike. BMW's top rack system. There's like three different ones. So I'm not sure what the first one is. The the base model, I guess. Um, but it's basically like the rack is like super small or whatever. Practically non-existent. Then there's the one I have. Which is like a, a plastic one. Um, it's pretty cool. I mean, I'm able to secure the current tail bag I bought on it. So it's not not bad but um all the most of the aftermarket stuff and not all of it but most of it relies on the third option bmw gives you for top racks which is the one that accommodates the vario uh luggage system so the, the vario um the vario uh top top box and it's essentially a metal a metal plate that uh that comes out from jets out from the rear a little bit further so it actually accommodates um it, more room for tail bags and whatnot and that thing directly from bmw if you can even get them right now i guess they're on complete back order because uh i try to order one at first um they're like nine hundred dollars or it's like nine hundred dollars so if you already have if you don't have my rack it's more expensive obviously because you got to order the rest of it but if you already have the style rack i have which is the hard plastic one uh you're gonna have to drop uh 900 bucks to upgrade to that other one and that's without the wiring loom because i don't really i don't plan on getting the vario luggage case um with the central locking system so with the wiring loom i don't i don't even want to know how much it's going to be probably like another 200 300 dollars so i just want the top plate for it because a lot of lone rider stuff um you need that top plate for a lot of his uh well not all not a lot of his stuff but just mainly the top boxes um they sell you an adapter plate that mounts on top of the vario uh top rack and um anyhow you still you still utilize the very old top rack with the plate that uh, lone rider sells and that's probably why i'm gonna go with sw motec because with sw motec i can get the tracks adventure top box with um a, a, a rack that I have to use or replace mine with for cheaper than just the top plate from BMW. So I believe, like I said, the top plate from BMW is like $900 and some change. The top, the, the Trax Adventure top box with the rack that you uh, replace this one with is like $850. Um, it'd probably be like $900 with shipping and handling. But yeah, uh, it's a complete system versus the BMW plate. I'm only getting the plate and I would still have to buy a top rack or a, a top box, um, which as you guys may know, top boxes are not cheap. They, they usually are about that price, about 900, 800 bucks, depending on the brand and uh, the size. So yeah, I'm probably gonna go with that. Uh, with the SW Motec uh, tracks, and plus it looks pretty sharp. It, it looks sharp, man. I like, I like, I dig the the look of it. Let's sit down for a sec here. All right, let's get back into it. So yeah, I need to get a top, a, a, a proper top box, um, some paneers. And uh, camping shit. So I don't, I don't see myself uh, being able to afford that stuff anytime soon. Um, I got a lot of trips planned in the summer, so 
the camping stuff's gonna have to be on hold till next summer but like i said you know by then hopefully i'll have some classes under my belt and i'll be able to do some cooler trails That view. I love that view from this corner right here. If you all are in the Southern California area and can make it up here, I highly recommend this trail, guys. It's a lot of fun. Especially this time of the year where, it's, where it doesn't really rain too much and uh, this stuff is all dried up. It's a pretty, pretty sweet trail. Can't say it enough. I like how it has a little bit of sandy stuff around for me to kind of get a feel for it. Um, a feel for like my tire my front tire kind of cutting loose a little bit and my rear tire getting squirrely this part right here kind of freaked me out the first time i did it because it's kind of soft there and it caught me off guard still trying to figure out this whole the feel for everything man on off-roading um if you guys didn't watch my previous videos uh welcome to the channel but um i'm i was primarily a street rider um my whole life i've owned nothing but uh, uh i shouldn't say that i've owned mostly sport bikes um at one point i was getting into nakeds or whatever or tried to get into the nakeds and got a uh mt07 which is a great bike but uh, i ended up only owning it for like a year because ultimately um i didn't like it was fine zipping around town and um you know going to the store and stuff and staying on like in the street in the city or in town but out here it gets super windy and anytime i wanted to go out of town on, on the interstate it would uh i would get blown all over the place so this is that campsite that I stopped at last time. I'm not gonna stop here today. I'm just gonna keep going. Um, no real point in it. I already had my coffee. So we're just gonna keep on riding. Anyhow, yeah, so I had my MT-07 for like a year and it just, uh, not having fairings, man, on those naked bikes. I don't know how some of you guys do it riding on windy days uh, on the interstate and it just sucked and before that so that's the same so before that bike i actually had a um a um a harley davidson uh iron 883 sportster and that one also sucked on the interstate for the same reason it's just too light no fairings and the the way you sit on it without a without a windscreen you're just exposed to the wind and it just it made for a horrible time on some windy days so i traded that one in for an mt07 and then um traded that one in for uh an r1 or no i think i, I sold that cash and then i bought an r1 but uh sorry about that guys my gopro battery died so i had to stop anyways but uh yeah my apologies so i just stop it in might as well take a sip of water i figured and well i changed the battery anyhow let's continue on with it so like i was saying before my battery cut out um yeah 
primarily uh, only own sport bikes. So this whole off-road stuff on on big adventure bikes is all is all new to me. Um. So yeah, that's why I'm kind of a shit rider when it comes to this off-road stuff. Uh, I'm sure you guys can tell in the video. So, but like I said before, as my skill level increases, I'll be uh, hopefully making these videos more entertaining for y'all. And uh, yeah, so again, dude, I apologize, guys, if, if this content kind of is kind of lame for you hardcore um, dirt riders and whatnot. Uh, but you don't have to watch it, man. This is mainly for um, the guys that are starting to get into the world of adventure bikes and off-roading on their big adventure bikes. Just to show them that, hey, if a complete novice, or not even novice, a complete noob like me can do it, then uh, y'all can do it. You just got to get out there and try it. Just be careful, you know, ride, find a nice easy trail like this in your area and and uh, ride within your skill limits. And uh, so on one of my, my shorts, the one that I uh, filmed where uh, I got stuck in the sand out there in Mecca by Little Boss Canyon. Uh, a viewer commented that uh, I'd be better off with like a, a Honda 250 or something like that. And you know what? For off-roading, you are 1000% correct. I'm not going to argue that at all. But if you've watched my previous video, and in most of my videos I mentioned that, this is my only form of transportation. I don't own a car or anything else. So I needed something that I could also use to get me around. Um, you know, take, take me, get me out. Get me out and see the world. And I know a 250 is capable, but I'm not gonna be as comfortable, right? So you gotta have to kind of sacrifice things. First and foremost, I didn't buy a, a 1300GS to um, do nothing but off-roading. If I would have done, if I wanted something to do nothing but mainly off-roading, I would have probably got like a Ducati Desert X or a, um, you know, one of those Hondas or a Yamaha Tenere or what have you. I would have gotten something more oriented towards off-roading over highway riding and street riding. And that's the reason I got the 1300 because I wanted something more comfortable and was more highway capable than all those other bikes because um, this thing is truly truly uh, a comfortable bike and it's an awesome bike on the on the highway and it's an, in my opinion it's an awesome bike for this uh, but yeah I'm not I never plan on doing any single track stuff or anything real technical like that. You know, I'll leave that to you professionals and you guys that have been doing it a long time. I, I mainly plan on doing these type of uh, fire rows or whatever you call these things. Because these are, these are just as fun for me. I don't really care to do like some hardcore like single track stuff. The other thing is I'm not rich guys so I can't afford to get hurt. Um, I got to be able to go to work the next day and, and, and make a living, earn a living you know. 
So all that hardcore stuff I'll leave to you guys that got money and skill and are retired and can afford to lay up on the couch if you get an injury. I was close. So this is the, all the trail that um, basically got got deleted or not deleted, but that I didn't post to that first uh, video I did about coming up this trail. Uh, like I said, the way my GoPro was angled. It, all you could see was the ground directly in front of my bike, which obviously doesn't make for good content and me talking. So I just got to make sure that GoPro is in the correct angle again. Yeah, it's up. All right. Yeah, so last time I actually did finish all this thing here, this whole trail. Um, I like it. It's it's very nice. It's a very nice very nice trail You know you don't have to have a very aggressive tire setup or um, Or even you can even come out here like in a regular SUV You don't even have to have that that an, an aggressive suspension setup. Just got to be careful and take your time So this is that fork. This is where the video ended last time right here where I stopped to check the map and when I checked the map I um, adjusted the camera's angle and it was just I completely foobarred it pretty upset about it but it's all good just come back out here and do it again loving all these little hills all these little up and downs a little bit soft there oh it's weather right now so awesome guys um Got a light breeze coming in from the north. And it's just so, so nice up here. It was super dusty on my ride up from uh, from the desert. Uh, I almost didn't want to go riding, but I figured, hey, usually if it's dusty down there, it isn't too bad up here. Just because um, down there, you get all the loose sand from the from across the interstate that blows into the valley on real windy days so as you guys can see here it starts to kind of get a, um, a bit a bit loose with the rocks but as long as you stay in in the in the um the tire treads from the previous cars and trucks you'll be all right and uh, i apologize for um my sniffles um, with this wind and like I said the dust from the desert um, my, my allergies start to kind of flare up a little bit So and I didn't bring any tissue paper unfortunately kind of Poor uh, poor poor planning on my part there should have grabbed some at the gas station, but It's all right. You just have to endure There are worse things Get that view Holy hell, that's an awesome, awesome view. So I don't remember it being this rocky last time I came in here. Um, whoo, whoo, almost took a little spill there, guys. Some of these big rocks get behind that rear tire. Look 
at that view. I mean, there's so many views here, it's amazing. It's just perfect, perfect trail. Trying to look out there as much as I can for you guys to see and get a get a feel for what I'm looking at. At the same time, I don't want to be, be crap. So if you guys don't know, it's Monday today. Um, typically, I have Mondays and Tuesdays off from work. And uh, those are the days I, well, Monday mainly. Monday I'll be doing these off-road, off-roading uh, videos. Cause I like to have one day to kind of chill, do my laundry, clean up the house. You know, those adult, adult, type of activities that we hate to do and also uh, wash this thing and keep her clean because I don't like having a dirty bike so uh, that's what I usually do Tuesday and uh, typically I edit my videos on Tuesdays as well uh, no, actually, you know what? I, I I normally edit them. I usually pump out this this video will be out uh, this the day when I get home. I usually first thing I do when I get home is edit the video and uh, upload it. So usually usually I tend to upload these things uh, at, in the evening after I get home, which works out. Like, I, uh, I don't really care. I've said that before in another video. I don't really care about the algorithm. I know YouTube has analytics and it shows you, like, the time people get home and watch videos or whatever. But I really don't care, man. I figure my videos... I got a lot of viewers that are, like, in Germany and um, places like that, like the UK and stuff. And for you boys, you guys will be... You know, watch, hopefully watch the video before you go to work or something like that. When you wake up and drink your coffee. See what us Yankees are doing, you know? Us Yanks. I tip my hat off to you boys out in the UK that ride motorcycles, man. And Germany and the places that have shit weather all the time. Because you guys ride in some of the absolute worst conditions year round I had a, a viewer comment on a previous uh, short where I was washing my bike tell me oh you shouldn't spray water into the bike like that you know it'll ruin it I, you know I responded like did people ride bikes in the in the rain all the time and not only that but adventure riders you know they'll do deep water crossings on these things where damn near the whole bike is in the water for uh seconds at a time i don't think uh a light shower from a water hose is gonna make anything malfunction and if it does then i'm gonna have bigger problems to worry about so yeah these things man you, they're pretty uh pretty durable they're not meant to be stored in a garage and wiped down with a with a with a micro cloth or whatever microfiber cloth meant to be out in the elements and I get it like yeah you don't want to use a um, one of those um, you know power washers and spray directly into the exhaust or into the uh, air intake or something like that or spray the radiator too hard because you'll bend the, you'll bend the fins for sure but with a, with a night with a garden hose man and shower set on shower it's fine ain't nothing gonna happen to it I've washed all my street bikes you know 
in the same way and never once had an electrical issue not one time I'll tell you one thing though man riding these bikes standing up like this is definitely a test of your endurance man it's like you know just standing up the whole time definitely not gotta get get used to this my feet start to kind of go numb after a while but i got weird circulation i probably should get that looked at Should have probably stopped till you guys could check out that view right there, but you guys get the idea, I hope. It's kind of hard for me to stop sometimes because I'm I got momentum and not that right here in this sand, this uh, hard pack stuff, it would be hard for me to get going again, but yeah, just nervous, that's all. Especially now that I'm kind of stepping it up. I mean I to you guys, it might look the same on camera, but to me, uh, I'm going quite a bit faster this time. Oh, I had it in neutral. No wonder it was felt weird. Rookie mistake. Look at that view. I'll slow it down a little. Oh, this thing's so fucking fun, man. Excuse my language for you kids out there, but yeah. Like I said, some of you hardcore. Yeah, this is about the point of the video where the guys at ride full throttle on these type of trails are probably not even watching anymore giving it a thumbs down and a negative comment but for you guys that are still watching man this is so fun to me it's being out here in nature more than anything man so for those that don't know me i'm a gamer uh, i spend a lot of time on my computer playing playing video games and just being a, an introvert even though I'm a bartender, I know, but it's different. I, you know, being a bartender, I kind of just turn it on because I have a purpose, right? I got to sell drinks and whatnot, but I'm, I'm, I'm an introvert. I'm naturally an introvert and uh, I hate leaving my house. So that's another reason I bought this bike was to get out, meet people and um, just get out of the house more. And uh, yeah go on adventures <laughs> playing video games is is awesome though i'm not gonna lie I, I enjoy doing that too but life is short and if you just sit sit in your room all day playing video games you're just gonna well life's gonna pass you by and you'll never know what could have happened what could be by doing that Like, when I had the S1000, my last bike, I never really got the urge to um, go out and ride. I got a bee. A bee kind of got in my helmet right just now, guys. I got to take that thing out before it stings me. Don't panic. Don't panic. One second, little bee. I will get you out safely and sound. Please don't sting me, little bee. Oh, shit.
Yep, we're supposed to go this way, guys. Had to turn it around a little bit. Kind of squirrely, but got it done. So this is a new leg for me, guys. Haven't been down this route yet. We'll see how it goes. I can already tell you right now, it's a little bit sandier. And I put the visor down. I don't want another bee in my helmet. <clears throat> so this is Rousel Road. Where I was on just now was uh, Thomas Mountain Road. This one here, I can already tell, is a little bit more rutted out than the other road. At least this portion of the trail is. Uh, riding with the visor down sucks. Note to self, remember to bring goggles next time. Hopefully no more bees pop into my helmet. I apologize again guys for uh, my sniffles. So somebody commented that uh, the S1000 sounds like a tractor, a 1930s tractor. Uh, I'd have to agree, but you know what? I dig it, man. Even the 1250 I've heard sounds, has that tractor type of sound to it. Um, I don't mind it. The, the most important thing with me with bikes and stuff, for the most part, in general, is that they're not they're they're not too vibey um i've owned the s1000 was was super vibey to me and that's one of the things one of the biggest determining factors on why i traded in man i hate i hate high vibe bikes i like bikes that you know you turn them on at idle sure they can be loud whatever but as long as they don't vibrate like you know they're gonna make your your hands go numb that's really all that matters to me and that they're reliable Am I recording? Yeah, all right. Don't remember if I pressed the record button earlier when I stopped to A, take that B out and B, um, turn my bike around because I missed a turn. Yeah, it's a lot sandier over here for sure, but so far nothing too detrimental or crazy um just gotta take it slow i want to be taking a little bit slower than i did the first portion of that trail just because i don't know what to expect around these corners here around these straights and i kind of want to see it before it gets too sandy whoa 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 close to motorized vehicles and foot traffic Huh. Well. Shit, guys. I'm not sure which way to go. We're going to have to consult the, the, the Google Maps here. Again. Give me one sec. I'll be right back.